Welcome back, everybody, to the Westlake Hornets Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. As today, the Hornets will head out to Big Ten Country as they are set to take on the number 12 ranked Minnesota Golden Gophers in what I expect will be a very good football game. Last week, Westlake played their rivals, the Utah State Aggies, and ended up getting the win, improving their record to 2 0. However, the Hornets did not look all that good last week. Westlake only won the game by 12, 31 to 19, and although the defense was very impressive, I can't really say the same about the offense. I know 31 points is pretty solid, but both quarterbacks who got playing time, Keith Fleming and Marsucio Walteron, whom are both still challenging for this starting position, neither of them played all that well. After being extremely accurate in the game against Florida in week one, Keith Fleming was not very accurate this game. And for Marsucio Walteron, he fumbled it twice after fumbling it once against Florida. So before we get into today's game, I want to recognize the Wesley Hornets who have just been drafted into the NFL and our Jaguars franchise on Madden. Delvin Hines was the number one overall pick. He is an Atlanta Falcon. Steven Westwood will be the starting quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Anthony Mitchell and Mike Wilson, both first rounders. They go to the Chargers and Panthers, respectively. David Harris is a Jacksonville Jaguar, by the way. And everybody else are getting drafted too, which is very fun. Welcome, everybody, to TCF Bank Stadium here in Minnesota as the number one ranked Wesley Hornets take on the number 12 ranked Minnesota Golden Gophers. Look here at the coin toss. Look at number four for Minnesota. That is wide receiver Titus Moss. I imagine you all recognize that name because Titus Moss played his first four seasons with Westlake, but is at Minnesota now as a graduate transfer. So a little bit of a revenge game here for Titus Moss, who never really got a chance to start at Westlake. Now gets that chance against Minnesota. Third and seven. Moss is the intended receiver, but it's picked off by the senior corner, Mac Terry. Bad pass by quarterback Cedric Dahl, who does project to be one of the better quarterbacks in the nation this year. But he underthrew the former Westlake Hornet, Titus Moss, and Mac Terry comes down with it. Despite not playing all that well last week, Keith Fleming is still the favorite to win this starting battle as he tosses it for the freshman, Matt Miller, who will find the end zone, his first career rushing touchdown. And the Westlake Hornets are on the board first as they lead it 7-0. Fleming executes the option perfectly, and Matt Miller does the rest. I think Matt Miller has so much potential, and I wish Westlake got him the ball more. So Westlake now leads this game 7-0. Very good start on both sides of the ball for the Hornets. Let's see if Minnesota can rebound as Dahl with a nice throw over to Barnes. Down the field, passes midfield. That'll be a big gain for Darius Barnes. He's wrapped up by the senior safety, Jock Ballone. Following play, Dahl has no time to throw it, and he is sacked by Big Tuna. Richard Rivers Jr., his fourth sack of the year. Second and 13 now for the Golden Gophers. Dahl hands it off for Wright. He gets past Herring and has a few blocks. That's Damon Wright for running back, making up yardage from the sack and more as he brings Minnesota into the red zone. Third and four, Dahl. His pass is caught by the former Hornet, Titus Moss, for a gain of 15. Moss played well in Minnesota's opening game last week against an undisclosed FCS opponent. First and goal, Damon Wright will find the end zone for a Minnesota touchdown, and it looks like the Golden Gophers have come to play. They're going to try to keep this one competitive at least, as this game is tied at seven. Westlake has the football back, third and one for the Hornets. Fleming will keep it himself on a read option. Nice run by Fleming, trying to juke out the defender. He's unsuccessful, but still a good first down run for Fleming. Wardy has three rushing touchdowns on the young season. Following play, it's now Isaiah Sparks in the backfield. It still feels weird having Isaiah Sparks wearing number eight now. As Fleming on the run connects with the freshman Lamar Gallagher for a first down. Gallagher will compete with Paul Richard for the starting tight end position next year once Reggie Herman does graduate. Very next play, Fleming is sacked by Byron Hood. For a loss of eight. That'll lead to a third and long. Keith Fleming in a scramble to his right. Trying to do what he does best and that's use his legs as he will be pushed out of bounds for a gain of 11. 
That'll lead to an interesting fourth and seven. The Hornets will send the field goal unit out. This is a 54-yarder for Zebediah Phoenix for second, and it barely hooks in. The sophomore will connect from 54, and Westlake will get back on top. Zebediah Phoenix is awfully lucky that kick went in. I thought that one was going to go wide right, but it is just barely accurate. And it is now 10-7 as that one was actually fumbled from Damon Wright. Titus Moss was there to recover it. A huge break for Minnesota. Third and five now. Cedric Dahl under pressure and he is sacked by Ronald Benson. Benson has been one of the most impressive players on this team this season. He played outside linebacker last year and then moved over to the middle with David Harris surprisingly declaring for the NFL draft and Benson has excelled there. Marsucio Ultron is now in the game for the Hornets. Ultron did throw the ball better last week, but he still fumbled it twice as he gets it to McBride for a gain of 21, which will conclude quarter number one. Westlake leads it 10 to 7. Marsucio Ultron really has to play well these next few weeks if he wants any chance of winning this QB battle. Ultron on the run for Dale McBride, and he will be brought down at the 15. Dale McBride has been. One of the best players on this offense this year. He has outperformed both Carter Westwood and Cassius Troy, which is a little bit of a surprise. Ultron now under pressure, and he is sacked for a loss of eight by Aaron Hunt. I have called Marsucio Ultron a magnet because defensive players are literally attracted to him and not looks-wise. Second and 18, wouldn't you know it, another sack. Byron Hood with his second of the day. Hood has sacked both quarterbacks now, and it's third and 25. Ultron trying to scramble with it. Going to take a shot for the end zone, and he underthrows Cassius Troy, and it's picked off by Minnesota. That's Johnson with the play for the Golden Gophers. We know Ultron has a ton of arm strength, but he just underthrew Troy there. The accuracy was there, but didn't quite get it where he wanted Second and inches, Dahl fumbles it. That's Ronald Benson with the force. It's picked up by the big boy, Kez October, who will dive into the end zone for a scoop and score. So despite turning it over in the red zone, Westlake will get a defensive touchdown shortly after. Ronald Benson continuing his strain of impressiveness and the big D tackle, Kez October, in his senior year with his first career touchdown. And we are now having a 10-point lead for Westlake. 17-7 with 5 to go in the second. Dahl hands it off for right on first down, and he loses two. The defensive tackle, Sheldon House, brings him down, and Westlake's defensive line has started off this game very well. Second and 12, Dahl under pressure, and he is sacked. The play was made by Big Tuna, along with Winston Johnson, for a loss of a few. And this pass rush now with three sacks for run defense hasn't been too bad either. And it is now third and 14 for the Golden Gophers as they try to get out of this sticky situation here. Outside of the touchdown scoring drive, Minnesota has not been able to move the ball at all. Dahl under pressure and he is sacked. Nick Gardner, the senior, brings him down for a loss of six. All three plays on that series were losses of yardage courteous of the defensive line, and it remains 17-7. Ultron still in the game. Third and four, Matt Miller fumbles it, and it's picked up by Johnson. This is not the same Johnson who had the interception, I don't think, which is kind of wild. Matt Miller on the ground in pain, as it looks like he might have a concussion, and his day could be done. Westlake has now turned it over twice with Marsucio Ultron in. Now, that one wasn't Ultron's fault. He actually made the right decision on the throw, but... It's still a turnover. Dahl connects with Titus Moss down the field. Wrapped up at the 26, but not before gaining 44. Titus Moss is one of the most talented receivers in the country. It's very unfortunate he didn't get his chance to start at West Lake, but I am happy for him that he is getting that shot with Minnesota. First down, Damon Wright loses four. It's Kez October who has looked really good today, bringing him down with the tackle. Kez October has not had the career that his older brother Octavius had at Westlake, but Kez is still very talented himself. Third and 14, the screen is actually a success, 
as Damon Wright brings it inside the 10, a huge conversion for Minnesota with under two minutes to go in the half. Cedric Dahl on first down for the end zone. It's caught by Jake Bridges for a Minnesota touchdown, and the Golden Gophers will cut the lead down to three as it is now 17-14. to Barsusio Walter on will remain in the game for Westlake. Third and 10, it's a screen for John Cummings. Cummings with a few blocks, and that's a huge tackle by the Golden Gopher defender. But Cummings does barely get the first down, and the chains will move. A little bit over a minute to go. Nice throw by Alteron. Over to Cassius Troy for a gain of 20, and Westlake is continuing to move it. Clock still ticking, around 50 seconds to go now. Alteron on first down under a ton of pressure. Going to try to scramble with it. And Alteron not only evades the sack, but will run for the first down. Marsusio Alteron is a mobile quarterback, but, I mean, he just takes too many sacks. So it's good to see him actually not taking a sack there. Third and three, it's a pitch for Dale McBride, and he will only gain two as the clock stops at 14 seconds after a timeout. Fourth and one, the field goal unit will come onto the field. A chip shot for Zebediah Phoenix, and again, he barely gets to go in, but it does go in, and Westlake will double their lead as it is now 20-14, to 14, and that'll do it for the first half. A very competitive game of football. The Golden Gophers came to play. They're a really solid team. However, Westlake does have the lead. Now on to the second half, Keith Fleming is back at quarterback and will likely stay at quarterback for the remainder of this game. Although Marsusio Walteron was not terrible by any means, I do think Westlake still trusts Fleming a little bit more as he goes to the outside for a nice run of about 16 yards and a Westlake first down. The offense just seems to have more of a groove when Keith Fleming is in at quarterback and right as I say that, he's intercepted by McKinley. Bad read by Fleming and excellent coverage by McKinley. And the Gophers will get a takeaway. Westlake has turned over the ball three times. Both quarterbacks have been picked off. And Keith Fleming now has back-to-back -back weeks throwing an interception. Not what you want to see there from the offense as Minnesota has it. Third and seven. Dahl trying to go for the screen and it's dropped by Big Tuna. Richard Rivers Jr., so the turnover will prove to not be an overly big deal as the defense forces a nice three and out. Westlake's offense has it back. First down, it's a handoff for Isaiah Sparks, who breaks to the outside and will get a gain of around 19 yards before being hit hard by the Minnesota defender. Now in the red zone, third and 11. Can Westlake punch it in, or will they have to go for another field goal as Keith Fleming is sacked? Nobody was open there before Fleming could throw it. Byron Hood with three sacks today. He's been extremely impressive. And Westlake's offensive line with one of their not-so-great performances of the season. Fourth and 22 now. That one from around 43 yards. The kick is good. And this time, it actually went through the middle. Zebediah Phoenix is 3-for-3 three three on field goals today, although he's had a few lucky calls. He still hasn't missed a kick. you got to give him credit. Third and 21 now after a sack by the linebacker, Dylan Washington. A number of other defenders were there as well. That was actually Kez October with the initial contact, so I imagine October and Washington will each be given half a sack. Third and long here for the Golden Gophers. Can they get a big play, or will the defense get a stop? Dahl under pressure, and he's brought down by the freshman, Justin Graves, coming in to make the play. Graves had his first career interception last week, and today he gets his first career sack. However, the fun for Justin Graves would quickly come to an end as he muffs the punt on the following play, and Minnesota will get the ball back. Four turnovers now for Westlake if you do include the muff punt. Westlake just has to keep better care of the football. They've had turnover issues two weeks in a row now, as there is Cedric Dahl with a nice run for 15 yards. Dahl's attributes don't really tell you that he's overly mobile, but he's ran the ball well today, and last week he ran for over 180 yards in their win over the FCS team. First down, there's Damon Wright losing yards. Justin Graves making up for his muff punt, and that'll do it for the third quarter. The only point scored in this quarter was a Zebediah Phoenix field goal. Westlake leads it 23-14. However, Minnesota is getting close to this end zone. Third and goal. It's a screen for Wright. 
And he gets it to the five, wrapped up by Jacques Ballone. So now it's fourth and goal. I was expecting Minnesota to go for the field goal, but they're going to go for it. I don't totally disagree with this call because they're already this close, so they might as well. Dahl scrambling, and he does not get it. Wrapped up after a gain of two by Kez October. A huge defensive stop for Westlake. The only problem is they start the ball at around the three-yard line. Here's a nice run with Isaiah Sparks. Sparks cuts to the inside, and it looks like Westlake is out of safety range, bearing some ridiculous loss. Second and three now. The clock continuing to tick. As long as Westlake plays smart football and don't turn it over, they should be fine. As here is Irving Porter to the outside, wrapped up at midfield, but not before gaining around 30. It's been kind of a rough start to the season for Irving Porter, but that's one of his biggest runs of his career, probably. Good to see Porter with a nice play. Hopefully, he can try to pick it up. Five and a half minutes now to go left in the game. Fleming fakes the handoff for Cummings. Going to scramble with it to his right. Fleming finds a wide open Carter Westwood. My God, what was that coverage? Nobody was even close to Carter Westwood. Did he catch the virus? Because the defensive backs were socially distancing themselves away from him. Westlake very close to the end zone. First and goal. Fleming scrambling. Risky throw and it's caught by Dale McBride for the score. And the Westlake Hornets will make it a 15-point game. That was a ballsy throw by Fleming. It very easily could have been intercepted, but he got it up enough and McBride was able to come down with it. So Westlake is going to go for two. They want to make it a three-score game here and pretty much continue to deteriorate at Minnesota's chances of winning, and they do just that as Reggie Herman will be the one to take it in. So now it is 31-14, and Minnesota kind of needs a miracle at this point. Dole going up the middle for Austin on second down. A huge gain for Brett Austin, and it seems like Minnesota is not going to go down without fighting. As they have it nearing the red zone, it is third and ten. Dahl looking to throw it. Can't really find anybody, so he's going to take a shot for the end zone, and it is broken up by the freshman, Joe Lilly. So now it is fourth down. Minnesota has to go for it. They don't really have a choice, and if they don't get this, I don't think there's any possible way they win. Cedric Dahl gets it to Hughes, and he does not get it. What a tackle by Jock Ballone, only allowing nine yards. An incredible hit there by the senior. And now, Westlake has it with about three minutes to go. All they have to do is hold on. But it looks like they're going to throw it to start the drive. Fleming on the run. Deep ball, and it's caught by his favorite target, Dale McBride, for a huge gain. Dale McBride continues his awesome game and an awesome start to the season. I think through three games, McBride has more receiving yards than he did in the first eight games of last year. McBride really started last year off slow, played better down the stretch, and this year, he has started off really well. Not too long later, Fleming taking a shot for the heavens, and it's caught in the end zone by Cassius Troy. I don't really think I've said his name too much today. Troy has been extremely quiet, but he makes a ridiculous catch, mossing a Minnesota defender, and the Hornets will add some insurance to their lead. Let's take a look at what's going on around the rest of college football as Virginia beats Florida State 38-34, a dominant game from quarterback Aiden Kentz. Westlake plays Virginia in their next game. And then Alabama upsets Vanderbilt. I never thought those words would come out of my mouth, but Vanderbilt is ranked, Alabama is not, and the Crimson Tide get the win 10-6. Things have changed here in college football. Let's just leave it at that. Minnesota still trying to keep their pride as a deep ball from Cedric Dahl over to Reese, who will bring it to around the 40 for a gain of 35. Now it's second and goal. The Golden Gophers would continue to charge towards the end zone. Cedric Dahl going to look to throw it, and it is a one-handed catch by Titus Moss for the touchdown. Moss did not make many catches as a Westlake Hornet, but the ones he did make were pretty spectacular. Just like this one, a one-handed grab as he is trying to show off there as Minnesota will go for two. That's cute. They still think they have a shot to win. <laughs> will they get it? Dahl going to look to throw it, and it is incomplete. Excellent coverage by Mac Terry. 
Now I don't think Minnesota thinks that they have a shot to win. They will still go for the onside kick here as it will be recovered by Dell McBride. McBride here on the return cuts to the outside and there goes Dell McBride down the field. He is wrapped up inside the 15. A huge return on the onside kick by Dell McBride. I think it's safe to say he was the best player on the field today for Westlake. The Hornets have it at the three. They're just going to let the clock out. They're going to be good sports, not try to run out the score. And Westlake wins it 38-20. to I think the game was closer than the score suggests. Westlake played really well in garbage time. Keith Fleming was okay early on. Then in garbage time, he was outstanding. Marsusio Walteron was fine. Now both quarterbacks did throw an interception today. Neither was perfect, but neither was bad. Not much has changed with the QB battle. Fleming is still the heavy favorite to win it, but Marsusio Walteron is still fighting. Dale McBride with a big game for Westlake. He looks like one of the best playmakers on this offense this year. Next week, Westlake has a bye, and the following week, they will travel out to the University of Virginia to take on Aiden Kentz and the Cavaliers. I hope everybody enjoyed. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and as always, have a good one. Peace.